Welcome to the College Football Bros. I'm Michael Newman. I'm Ryan Newman. And I'm Trey Newman. All right, in this episode, we're going to preview the Sugar Bowl between Clemson and Ohio State. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win. Uh, we read every comment. We respond to as many as we can. So please do that. And uh, our predictions, score predictions for the game will come a little bit later in this video. But we're going to start with some fun prop bets. We uh, took a look at the the betting sites out there. And as we record this, not a, not a ton of props out there yet. So we decided to make up our own. Uh, what's yours, Ryan? All right. So my prop bet is over or under seven total punts in the game. Okay. Well, I, I did some little bit of research last year in this game. There were 13, but it was a crazy, crazy amount of punts. But the defenses in that game were pretty stellar. Um, yeah. And it was a lower scoring game than I anticipate here. Uh, I'm going to say under on this. Uh, I feel that both offenses are really going to perform well. When at full strength, Ohio State has proven that their offense is very scary to play. We know what Clemson has been doing in recent weeks. So I see more of a track meet and and less punting in this game. Um, and if a team is down, they might be more aggressive and, and go for it rather than punt away. Yeah, I, I was tempted to go under um, because I don't see Ohio State stopping Clemson a ton with that secondary. Uh, and the total is 66. That's that's the Vegas over under on the total. So it should be uh, a high scoring game. But I looked and these two teams average seven and a half punts per game uh, when you when you combine the two of them. And they're facing tougher defenses here than than they do in an average game. So I, I think I'll go over that seven. It could still be a high scoring game, even with uh, eight or more punts. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, my prop bet here for you guys is over under 150 rushing yards for Ohio State. Over 150 yards for Ohio State. I'm going to go under here. Uh, for Ohio State, um, Clemson, uh, they just held a good Notre Dame rushing attack to 44 yards uh, in the conference title game, um, and everybody's healthy on that defense. Everybody's ready to go. Um, so I'm not, I'm not quite sure Ohio State can get there. That's kind of a lot. And you know, the only time Ohio, um, Clemson game gave up more than 150 yards uh, this year was at Notre Dame in that uh, overtime thriller um, when they didn't have a couple of their studs on that defense. So. Um, they're missing Davis and Skalski in particular. Um, so I, I don't think so. I'm going to say uh, Ohio State goes under. I'm actually going to go over. It surprised me to see, but Ohio State averages 275 yards on the ground. Um, obviously, much different beast here. But we saw what they did against a very good Northwestern defense. Trey Sermon had over 300 yards. Um, I think I just think Ohio State's sitting on a good game. Um, they have the blueprint from last year. They put up. Uh, almost 200 yards. I know they had J.K. Dobbins, Dobbins, but Trey Sermon obviously isn't a slouch. I think Wyatt Davis and that massive O line can can push him over the top here. All righty, looks like I said a good number. Apparently, that's right. And same with right. you, Ryan, with the punts, one over, one under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one over one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what uh, what I can do. Over <laughs> under 320 passing yards for Trevor. Lawrence. I'm just going to go with whatever Michael says, just to screw you. <laughs> just to spite Trey. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going over. Uh, he averaged 306 passing yards per game this season. And that included games where, you know, they had big leads um, and he had to, he got to sit late in the game, especially that Citadel game. I think he only played a half or so there. Um, so, you know, he probably would have averaged something like 320 if, if they were in more competitive games. And I think this game will be competitive. Uh, he's going to be asked to throw more than than maybe the average game. And the key here is is Ohio State's secondary is their weakness. They've allowed four of their six opponents so far this year to go well over their uh, their season average in terms of passing yards. So I think Clemson will do the same. And and Lawrence has a big game. I'm going to go under. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sticking. I'm helping Trey out here. Um, no, last year in this game he had 259. Again, I know it's a different, a different whole, different ball game, but definitely a different defense for us. Definitely State. a different defense for the Buckeyes. You got no Chase Young and uh, Denzel Ward, some some studs there on that uh, on that defensive side of the ball. But uh, I also might think, kind of like Trey re- it, it, it kind of said a little bit earlier, Clemson. I, I expect Clemson to be in the lead a little bit here, um, so they may focus a little bit more uh, on the ground game rather than risk it uh, with the passing game. And there is no 
Justin Ross or T Higgins uh, like they had last year. So, I mean, they're, they're no slouches on the, on the, on the perimeters for sure for, for Clemson, but they are also not elite players like those two guys. So um, he's averaged about three Oh five or so this year. I'm going to say he goes under the three twenty, not by much, but he gets there. All right. Uh, let's, let's move on to some bold predictions for the game. So before we get to kind of our baseline expectations, let's make some, some wild picks here. So, uh, Trey, why don't you get us started with with your bold prediction? Sure. So we obviously just focused on Ohio State's kind of vulnerable pass defense, but the an, another narrative of this game is Justin Fields and his decision making uh, against the best teams that he's faced recently. He's thrown interceptions. He threw three against Indiana, two versus Northwestern. He had two in this game last year against Clemson. But I'm going to say Fields doesn't throw a pick. And Trevor Lawrence, even against that vulnerable defense, will throw an interception. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's bold. It's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. bold. That's bold. Yeah. Uh, I am going to predict. Mine also has to deal uh, has to do with Justin Fields. I predict he will have negative rushing yards mm. in this game, and that's only happened one time since he's been at Ohio State earlier this year against Penn State. Uh, so I think it's bold. It just it wouldn't totally shock me though. Clemson's front seven is very good. They're fourth in the nation in sack percentage. They get a ton of tackles for loss. And Ohio State, conversely, has not been very good this season protecting Justin Fields. Um, part of that is also Fields holds the, holds the ball too long, so uh, that that could be an issue for Ohio State too. And and last year, Brett Venable's defense held uh, Fields to just 13 yards rushing, so they were pretty close. Yep. All right. Yeah, that's good. He couldn't really run all too well last year. He a little bit of yeah, it. he was a little, he wasn't fully healthy last year, but yeah. Yeah. But he was maybe, I mean, might play better that way. Um, all right. I'm going to go uh, Travis Etienne here. I think he's going to have the, the most rushing attempts of any game this season. Uh, and this one, his highest uh, up to this point was 20 attempts and that was against Boston college. Uh, so I'm going to, th- I'm going to think that uh, in this one, they're going to be working Working him a little bit harder, uh, of course, in the playoff matters, and I think they'll be a little bit ahead. So uh, they'll just keep riding ETN. All right. Uh, finally, we are we are ready to to make our picks here. So let me throw them up on the screen here, and I am taking Clemson to win thirty four to twenty seven, uh, and that means I think Ohio State will will cover that seven and a half number uh, against the spread. I guess I'm just thinking and and I guess kind of hoping that Justin Fields' thumb is, is okay. I, I think uh I'm you know it's he it's been a while since since that Big Ten championship. He's had a little bit of time to rest. And I think getting Chris Olave back will be will be huge for Ohio State as well to go along with with Garrett Wilson. He'll have his uh full assortment of weapons like he didn't against Northwestern. I think that'll cause him to play better. But ultimately I think the difference in the game is Trevor Lawrence and yeah, maybe not as good receiving core as in years past, but he's still got Amari Rodgers. Cornell Powell stepped up this year. EJ Williams, the the young guy, is, has been coming on as of late. So there's enough weapons there against the weakness of, of Ohio State, their secondary, to uh, to take advantage. And I don't think that Ohio State's going to quite be able to, to keep up enough to get the win. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we definitely have a very similar line of thinking, but I am going to take uh, Clemson. Uh, against the spread. I got a 38 27 ball game. So uh, I think Clemson will cover that spread just by a little bit by a field goal or so. Um, I just think like you said, Michael, uh, Trevor Lawrence is kind of the difference. I mean, uh, he's proven in big games. That's just when he plays his best. And this is also when he can do it on the ground. I mean, in the biggest moments is when he just, you know, obviously last year in this game, what do you have like a hundred yards rushing or over that? He, so he had that huge run that kind of yeah. got him going a little bit in that game. So he just kind of delivers, whatever they need. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I know their receiving core maybe isn't quite as good. Uh, and their ground game hasn't been quite as consistent this year, but <laughs> you still have Trevor Lawrence. It's like having Tom Brady in the NFL, like still feel yeah. pretty good about my team. If that guy's my quarterback. So, uh, I, I think they're just a little bit too strong, uh, because of him. And the, and the ground game for Clemson, you mentioned, yeah, it was definitely underperformed for most of the year, but the last two games against Virginia tech, and then who, you know, granted is not a great defense, but then against Notre Dame, right. they dominated. So mm-hmm. if those last two games are, are a sign, then they've got both the, the running game and the passing game going great. Yep. Yep. I am 
taking Ohio State to cover. I've also got Clemson winning, though, but uh, made it 34-28. I think Ohio State's sitting on a, a much better performance than, they, than they've than they shown. Uh, they had some COVID issues, missed a couple games, and they, had, they were shorthanded against Northwestern. They're going to get all if not or most if not all their their players back and i think they're sitting on a on a good game um they they're they're going to be inspired they've got the dabo comments to kind of to kind of yeah. uh, to help them Pretty out strong not, comment. That, not that that yeah, that matters too much but i think uh, fields wants to atone for throwing the two picks in last year's game ended up really being the difference and you know with 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 the balance of um also with um, Trey Sermon, of course, he's yeah. he's broken out. I just think Ohio State is gonna gonna give them give them a game, and it, it's gonna be coming down in the final minutes. But in the end, Clemson's just a little too balanced on offense with ETN and Lawrence, as well as a slightly better defense. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely a, a better defense, and that's that's another key difference is like that defense is a different animal at the end of the year than it was, you know, midway through the season, particularly in that, that Notre Dame game where they gave up a bunch of points because, you know, Skowski, Tyler Davis were out. I think Mike Jones was out in that game as well. So since they've been healthy, they've been gelling the end of the season. They've been ridiculous. Of course, we, what they did to that, that Notre Dame offense in the ACC championship. So, and that Notre Dame offense is top 15 offense. It's a good offense. But the one thing that's kind of surprising is that it's only a seven, seven and a half point spread. And you don't hear many people giving Ohio state much of a chance. They're just kind of like chalking it up to another Clemson Bama. So I think Ohio state's going to, they're going to be in this. Yeah. Another uh, tick for, I guess if Ohio state for, if you want them to cover uh, the star safety for Clemson, Nolan Turner is going to miss the first half because of a targeting penalty in that, that Notre Dame game. So Maybe Justin Fields will want to have a big first half, uh, get some points while they're while they're available. Um, yep. All right, that'll do it. We good here? Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you can see our national championship preview episode next week. Hit the thumbs up button if if you enjoyed this video. We're uh, primarily have been an audio podcast, but we're kind of pushing hard to to do more stuff on YouTube, more YouTube only videos. So would really appreciate your help in uh, getting these videos to more people. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. You've been watching the College Football Bros. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube and in your podcast app for college football content all year round. For bonus episodes and access to our Discord chat, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash college football bros. Thanks for watching.